treated correctly, or we could say under-treated. Um, this one may be a little longer, I may split it up into two, because the information may get uh, a bit detailed, and so to allow you time to digest part of it, and then come back and get a second half, uh, but we'll see how it goes. It's not tempting when I start flow and I flow and, and go. But um, first thing I want to talk about, I mean, say, are the disclaimers. I'm not a doctor. This information should not replace your doctor. It's used, it's for you to use it as a guide. But you should research and research for yourself. Next, I generally don't give stats. Because stats um, can often be subjective and misleading based on who is doing the actual study. There's much, too much documentation to prove that. Also, when it comes to thyroid issues, stats are based on, and actually other issues as well, stats are based on lab reports, which are based on the environmental factors. And environmental factors vary by location. For example, if your normal thyroid labs are based on the labs for all the other people in your demographics, for your small geographic area, they're not based on your body needs or some real scientific standard. If I just move from a city where my labs were abnormal, let's say I live in New York, and tested my labs were abnormal, and then I went over into Jersey, no, not Jersey, let's say I went down to Georgia and tested there. Well, the norm in Georgia may be different from the norm in New York. And so I've got a doctor in New York saying abnormal, and I've got a doctor in Georgia saying normal. Does that get you any closer to where you be, need to be? No. So I try to um, stay away from the stats, like I said, because they um, are environmentally based. But I definitely will highlight this um, geographical area issue when I talk more specifically about the lab work. Um, but these are the ways in which it affects your body. You have energy for days. I mean, you don't need to sleep. I mean, you, it's almost like you're the, the what is it, the Ever Ready Bunny or uh, whatever the battery call is. But you go and go and go and you can keep going for days. You, you can sleep off of just a few minutes of sleep, power nap, and you're ready to go again. But then eventually you crash and burn. And when you crash and burn, it is a crash and a burn. And your fatigue has set in. And, you know, you, you can sleep forever as well. But then you back up again, and you're going again. A lot of people feel anxiety. Um, and as I have here, it's caused by the excess adrenaline. And it's often related to adrenal issues. If you have hypothyroid problems, more often than not, your doctors are not even going to look at your adrenals. They may do a cursory um, test and that's it. They're going to dismiss it. Because they pretty much see adrenals as either working or not working. And that's it. They don't see them in an overactive state. They don't see them in a failing state. They only see it working or failed. Um, and those are usually the insurance doctors. And then there is uh, your change in cholesterol. Usually your cholesterol levels get lower. Sometimes even dangerously low. But this is with hyper thyroidism. Hot flashes. You could almost be in menopause you're having the hot flashes. You could be 25 years old. You're not in an age range that one would expect to be at the menopause stage, but experiencing symptoms like hot flashes. I'm a teenage girl. Flashing all over the place because of, you know, her, her system. As a person with hyperthyroidism, you tend to lose weight without dieting. You can 
almost waste away. And people would look at you. When I went through it, people looked at me and they thought I was on drugs. I promise you, don't do drugs. Um, the last illegal drug, I would say, was way back in college. And it was marijuana with one of my cousins. Um, and other than that, wasn't even a regular user then. It was just like you kept pressing, pressing, pressing. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll finally go ahead and do it. Um, and prior to that, it was the time in high school that if you watch one of my other tubes, I told y'all that was my payment to a supervisor to get him to stop sexually harassing me. I don't do drugs. Um, didn't have HIV or any of those other things that cause people to lose weight massively. But I had my thyroid was hyperactive, significantly hyperactive. And I wasted away down to under 100 pounds. So, um, ways in which it will affect your moods and emotions. You have chronic low-grade depression. And that's just because of the changes that are constantly going on physiologically in your body. That means you're depressed. That means you have emotional issues. It just means the chemicals in your body are not jiving right the way they're supposed to. But then at the same time, you're manic, if you will. You're in a hyper state. You've got a lot of energy. You're, you're up. You're ready to go. No matter what's happening, you're ready to do it. And all along, you're moody and crabby and irritable. Because a part of you, it's not normal for your body. And it, it's almost as if you can't handle, or somewhere in your body can't handle, you're ready to go. 2,000 miles an hour, and the rest of the world is still at a regular 85 miles per hour. You don't have any patience. It's like, okay, we got to get this done. got to get it done. Um, and when others around you are not getting it done at the level, at the rate that you're getting it done, you might be a little irritable. You might be a little crabby. Uh, some doctors have found that if they give patients anti-anxiety medicine, that will help deal with the anxiety. Now, what did we just say a slide before? Anxiety comes from the adrenals. They're not addressing the adrenals, but they're going to give you medicine to slow down the production of the cholesterol, uh, the adrenal um, epinephrine and, and the hormones. That's what I'm trying to go. The hormones that are coming from the adrenals so they can get rid of the symptoms. I talked about the anxiety. You got to keep going. got to keep moving. The intolerance of others and impatience and the bipolar like symptoms up and down. That's the the one minute you're you're a moody, crabby, irritable, the next minute you're manic, you're hyper, you're up, a little bit of depression mixed in there. It's kind of a back and forth. And so many people are running around diagnosing folk as bipolar. Many people have even been medically diagnosed as bipolar and their thyroids were never checked. So when I personally hear someone say, Oh well, He's flipping out today. Today he's going off and tomorrow he's not. Or she's flipping out. You must be bipolar. I don't think it's a joke because that is a stigma. That is a label that we're putting on people. And um, there's a very clear physiological problem that is not being addressed. And if we address that physical, physiological problem, those symptoms go away. First one to tell you. Now, thyroid. What happens to it? We see a picture of it here. Oftentimes it can become swollen. You can even develop a goiter. That's when the thyroid right here will expand so large it can even cut off your your ability to breathe. Your throat gets sore. Uh, it might be hard to swallow. You might not even be able to swallow water um, just because it's, it's painful. So these are things, again, for you all to be monitoring if you're dealing with. Um, that's not to say your condition is a result of hyperthyroidism, but it's definitely something you want to look at, check for, and make sure it's not something, you know, that, that needs to be addressed. What about the stomach digestion in your foods? You have acid reflux. Why? Because you have too much acid in your stomach. The stomach, if we see over here in this picture, is here and that's where your food goes down and there are acids um gastric acids that help to digest your food to break down the food well as a hyper person 
your acid level is too high. You have way too much. And so you wind up with acid reflux. Um, and so you wind up having to have a lot of antacids to kind of keep those symptoms down. Changing of diet can help some, but it doesn't help it totally. Your food will run through you. I mean, fast, it's almost as if uh, the fastest you eat it, the faster it's running straight through your body. And I wouldn't necessarily say you eat now in 10 minutes and you're on the toilet. But you eat now and, you know, within an hour or two you're on the toilet. Um, which for some people might not be a bad idea to get their systems flushed. But once your system is flushed, after you've done that for a couple, you know, a month or so after that, you know, you want your food to stay in. You want your body to be able to absorb all the nutrients. You don't want it to run through you too fast. And then you crave salt more than normal. So you've got to have chips. you got to have salted peanuts. Or anything that has salt, you're craving that a whole lot more than normal. Now, what about the impact to your cardiovascular system? You wind up developing, developing heart disease to some degree. Your heart could get enlarged. You see I have a picture of the heart here. Uh, heart palpitations, those are big and they can be scary. They can definitely be scary. Heart uh, fibrillations and you wind up being diagnosed with um, AFib. You have a high heart rate. These, um, and to describe what it feels like, um, it's almost as if your heart is about to explode out of your body. Um, it, it, it's just beating just that hard and just that fast. And the palpitate, pal, yeah, palpitations and the fibrillations, your, your heart is fluttering. It's like, um, think of a fish out of water and it flip-flops, flutters kind of back and forth. That's the, the, the best way I know how to describe it. At the same time, your blood pressure decreases. We already said your cholesterol decreases, um, but you may have trouble breathing. And um, you wind up with having anxiety attacks. That's oftentimes one of the earlier signs. Doctors tend to um, misdiagnose and just tell you something emotional, give you some Prozac or, or Risperdal, whatever it is they can give you, some sort of an, uh, anti-anxiety medicine or some mental health medicine and send you home. Keep this information in your arsenal because if it continues to occur, then you need to go beyond anxiety and look for other reasons why it keeps occurring. Now let's talk about the waste, the bladder, and the intestines. You see, I have two pictures here. One is of the uh, intestines and colon area, and the other one is of the entire digestive system starting from your mouth where your food goes in all the way down to the anus and rectum where the food is actually stored and coming or well, the last bit of food is stored and, and coming out and at that point it's not food it's waste like i already said you have more frequent bowel movements even diarrhea at times candida it's just a high level of yeast in your body because your food is passing through you're not absorbing all your nutrients so the nutrients that would normally keep your yeast levels normal in the body are thrown off. And women, we already have an issue with, with maintaining this. You know, we have our cycles. We have, um, you know, we can eat the wrong foods and throw off the yeast in our body and you run with the yeast infection. Well, hyperthyroid people, your candida can be, you can develop a high yeast uh, content and you wind up having to deal with that issue. So, um, colitis is what? Just an infection of colon area, uh, as well as irritable bowel syndrome. And these are some of the diagnoses you may get. If you start getting all of these diagnoses, you know, every time you turn around, you're at the doctor and they're giving you all these diagnoses, push your doctor for more testing. Do the research, push your doctor for more testing. What about your hair and your skin? Your hair can, you can lose hair, or it can grow slow, and it can break very fast. It becomes, um, for lack of a word, a better word, brittle. Um, not so much dry, though, but just breaks really fast. It's like weak. The hair shaft is, doesn't have any strength to it. So you're brushing your hair, and if it's not just coming out, 
because you know that the follicle of life cycle has, has ran through so fast then the hair shaft itself is weak and breaking fast but then you would have dry and itchy skin and so you develop dandruff your skin can be warm it could be red and it could be itchy um and the dry skin again that's that it could be in certain patches or just overall all over your body and it won't be like a um like a rash, like poison ivy type of thing where you're itching everywhere uh, or an allergy type of thing. It'll be in different areas of the body, not necessarily the whole body at one time. At least that's what I experienced. What about the brain or the brain in the head area? And these are critical. And I say these are critical because when people see some of these um, signs and symptoms here, they tend to false diagnose people with conditions that they don't really have. So you wind up with a fluctuating or difficulty or inability to concentrate. It's not because you're, you can't learn. It's not because you're slow or anything like that. It is because the chemicals in your body are in chaos right now. It has nothing to do with your brain function. It's really all about the chemicals and the hormones in other parts of your body, in your endocrine system, that are acting up and they're not sending the appropriate chemicals to your brain to um, issue out the correct signals, if you will. And so you have fluctuating difficulties or inabilities to read for long periods of time just because you can't concentrate. You've got, you know, and every, it varies with each person. You might have been one of those people that can sit down and read a book in one sitting. Or, you know, if it's a long book, one weekend. Well, if this thing is, is not being controlled properly, you might not be able to sit down for more than 30 minutes and read. Beyond that, you're not retaining the information. Which leads to the next one. Fluctuating in difficulty, inability to retain information. It's like the fastest is coming and it's going out. So you tend to be a little forgetful. You wind up with brain fog and memory issues. And again, all of that is not an issue with a dysfunction of your brain per se. And that's why, um, actually, as one mental health doctor put it very clearly, there are standards by which uh, doctors have to follow before they can diagnose you with a mental health condition. And one of the things that they're supposed to do is check your thyroid and your adrenals. Many doctors don't do that. They make the decision to stick you in that category, put you in meds, give you a label for the rest of your life, and you're taking pills for a symptom. You're taking pills that they hope will correct the symptoms in your brain, but the problem is coming from elsewhere. So you're taking those pills, and the problem is steady shooting. It's steady coming, steady coming, steady coming, steady coming, and it's never addressed. Um, as far as the head area, you might develop Graves' eye disease, and that's where the muscles and nerves in your eye become affected. And you see the people with the eyes popping way out of their heads. Well, you probably have Graves' eye disease. Dry eye syndrome, your eyes stay very dry. I know a lot of hyper people tend to walk with visine or, or some other drops. I don't necessarily recommend them. I recommend you see um, a specialist, a Graves eye specialist, if you're dealing with this. There are, I think, I think there are a few more. When I was dealing with it, I think there were three in the country that um, were considered experts in the field. And um, I was, you know, most high blessed me to be in position to be able to get appointments with both of them. Uh, once when I was living on the other side, on the East Coast, and when I moved here, I am very close to one of those experts. So, um, just as a precaution, when I first moved, made an appointment, introduced myself, said, hey, this is, you know, here's my history. Let's do a check. Let's get a baseline. So if I ever have to come to you, we know where we are and we've established a relationship. Dual vision is something else that will come up. 
um, and in my case, the dual vision was where I saw I would be looking straight ahead, but I would see two. If I covered each eye, my vision was, was 20-20. But if I tried to look at the same time with both eyes, I saw two of that particular object. And that is because in the process, the muscles are being stretched, they're being pulled. And so the eyes are not, the muscles are not um, expanding to the same level on both sides. And so, um, without getting too, too technical, let's see, how can I um, say this? If, um, for example, if you put both arms out in front of you and um, at a 90 degree angle, and you drop your right arm down 45 degrees. You are still in that position, your arms are still attached to your body, but they are exerting a different amount of force. It takes more force to hold open, to hold up that left arm at the 90 degree angle than it does to hold open, to hold up that right arm, which is at a 45 degree angle. So, similar concept with the eyes and where that dual vision comes into play. And so you've got, you know, you, you see two different objects, or two of the same objects looking straight ahead. Uh, and what we did in my case was, I used to walk around with one eye, one eye closed, uh, until my doctor and I was able to get to the specialist and we were able to work out a particular plan for me. And so he created specific glasses when I was going through that that tricked my eyes into thinking they were even with each other. And once my eyes were tricked into the glasses actually did the work and even the eyes up. Even though the eyes weren't, the actual trick was in the in the lenses. And so I was able to see straight. But that was one of the benefits by, you know, tracking down one of the specialists one of the experts in the field who had some history and some direct knowledge. You go see an ophthalmologist today and they may or may not you know, go that far with you. It just depends. So those are things you got to be mindful of. What about your hands, legs, feet, and your weight? One thing I had really, really bad was tremors in my hand. So to the point where if I held my arm out straight out, it would be shaking. Um, and it was a noticeable shake. It wasn't like a little small tremor. It was really a shake to where you can't keep your hand steady. You may have your legs, you, you'll feel that, that shaking in your legs when you're standing, especially when you're laying down at night. Um, and it's not something you have control over. And this is your autonomic nervous system that is, um, has kicked in and is causing this to happen. You're not controlling it. Uh, and I already talked about the losing the weight on a previous slide. You're losing weight and you're not even trying. So, here's our little it's energizer bunny. That's who it is. When it comes to relationships and work, you'll have difficulty in your relationships. Not necessarily because you're a terrible person. Not because, you know, you hate the person that you're with or they hate you. But due to the moods, the changes, the, the being manic today and the being sad tomorrow, not really sad, but the down tomorrow, or the being manic for too many days and you're worn out um, to where it, it looks like that bipolar type of symptom, people will begin to pull away from you. And again, you're going to get crabby. You've got the anxiety going on. So when you're hyped and you're ready to go, you don't realize that you're, you're hyped. To you, you think it's normal. You can't even see it. But others can see it. And they will, you know, kind of pull away. You will have attitude with them. They'll have attitude with you. And before people take time to find out what's really going on, look up and you have an argument with your boss at work. Or you and your spouse are having arguments. So... Um, and then your lower quality of work performance over time. Part of that is due to the brain fog, and part of that is due to an extended period of time of not sleeping. When you sleep, your body recharges. 
and if you're not getting the proper amount of sleep over an extended period of time your body your brain cannot recharge um so you have a lot of energy you've gone to sleep you woke, you've awakened you've got the energy to go but because of sleep deprivation over an extended period of time your work is not necessarily as productive especially if your work requires you to use a lot of brain function so um, what are some of the treatments? Medications. It's the first thing they'll offer you. They'll offer you some Synthroid, which is the synthetic thyroid hormone. Um, usually, and that's usually done as a, as a test, if you will, baseline. Most people don't stay on that for long term, but that's just a test and see what your thyroid is going to do with an inflection of. And then the treatment that they use, the medical, the medicine treatment that they use prior to any other methods would be PTU. And uh, I'm not even sure if I spelled that correctly. The, the full name of it is purple thyroid Purple thyroid, yeah, I did spell it correctly. PTU is what uh, hyper, hyper people call it. Another option is surgery to remove all or part of the thyroid. Back in the day, they used to remove part of the thyroid based on the amount of production that the thyroid was doing. But these days, they're not removing part of anything. They take, they're taking all of it. If they go in, they're getting the whole thing. Um, and then there's nuclear medicine. Some of the same nuclear type medicine. This is, this is medicine that they use for cancer patients. And then when they give you that nuclear medicine, they tell you, you'll just take one little pill for the rest of your life and everything will be hunky-dory. It's going to replace what you know, we're killing when we kill your thyroid and everything's fine. They don't tell you that that nuclear medicine process is going to not only kill your thyroid, but add levels of that stuff into your body. They don't tell you that their method, that's a, a, that's a permanent method. Uh, and it's going to put you in a hypothyroid state over the long haul. And um, that adds a whole other set of problems, which is going to be in a different video. So in hindsight, and this is from my direct experience, these are questions I didn't know to ask. No one knew. Um, none of the people who I shared my, my issues with knew anything about it. And there's scarce information on the Internet. Most of it just said, oh, yeah, it's no big deal. You just go and get these. These are the options, medication, surgery, or, or nuclear meds. Then you take a little pill, everything's hunky dory. Well, that's the biggest lie. That I will say outright. So in hindsight, I ask that you suggest if you want to go surgery and avoid any medicines, suggest they take a part of your thyroid and maybe half of it or whatever the case may be and see how your body can do um, for an extended period of time with only half of it. That may be just enough that you need to level your body out without having to do any more medicine, without having to do any more surgeries or anything else. If you're in position to do that, that would be my first recommendation to anybody dealing with it today. But I also suggest, and I have to adamantly suggest this, thoroughly research, thoroughly investigate, thoroughly deal with the potential of any other endocrine system gland being non-functional. The adrenals, the pituitary, all the other endocrine system glands, make sure doctors thoroughly check them. And if you have to get a second or third or fourth opinion, pay out of pocket to get the testing done because the surgery and the nuclear medicines, you can't undo them. The PTU, you can undo. You can stop taking the surgery and nuclear medicine. You can't undo. Um, and oftentimes doctors don't look at the impact of the other glands. And see my separate video on the endocrine system because I detail all the glands and how they kind of play a role into this. In my particular case, my adrenals were my target, were, were my main problem. Um, and doctors did not, they didn't even check the adrenals. I think they did a cursory test initially and that was it. And just went straight for will target the thyroid because the impact is having on your heart. And that was it. 
and I still wind up having to go through medications as well as nuclear medicine more than once because the thyroid was not the initial issue. And finally, I began to research and check for myself. Um, we're at 30 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this one. I think that's enough for, um, for you to digest at this point. And we're going to pick this up in a part two. Um, but definitely, if you have any of those symptoms that are in here, if you've got many of those symptoms, you definitely want to make sure your doctors are checking. And again, if you have to pay out of pocket to have the test done by a doctor that's not on the insurance, that's totally independent, it is well worth it. Because in the long run, you're looking at your quality of life for the rest of life. Um, whichever method you choose, it's going to impact your quality of life going forward. So, this is one of those bigger decisions that you'll ever make in your life. That being the case, digest some of this and uh, see me on part two of this. If you've got any questions, any comments, if you have specific issues, specific questions to your personal issue, um, you can leave them and I will try to get with you and, and you know, maybe communicate with you offline. I am not a doctor. So my disclaimer said I'm not a doctor. However, I will try to share with you what I know. I don't recommend that you put your personal business in the comments. So just indicate to me in some way that you have a question and make sure you leave your email or something and I will try to communicate with you that way just to guide you in um, how to get it medically resolved as best that I know how. Um, so that being the case, hopefully you found a piece to your puzzle in this, this um, cast, and we will see you over in part two.